up guys, He King here bringing you another Fury video, this time on, of course, obviously, Death Stranding, there. So, we only have a few days left till E3 2018, and I want to get my theories out as quickly as I can, because god damn it, I should have done this weeks ago, or months ago, when I thought of it. But yeah, let's just get down to it. So, my theory, what is Death Stranding? We, honestly... Don't know. I mean, it was announced back in, what, 2016, and we still know nothing about the game. Or was it 2015? I forget, but damn, it's been a long while. We still don't know what the game's about. Well, I have a theory, and it's a crazy-ass theory. It's a theory that's been discussed by several people, in fact. On one hand, you've got Python Selka, who are saying that this is potentially a Silent Hill game somehow or it's the Silent Hills game that was cancelled now these guys they did get the uh you know big boss is a double theory correct for the most part I mean it wasn't Grey Fox but they still got it right that it was not big boss you were playing as then on the other hand you've got this new dude uh Tomb Portable who is saying that this is Metal Gear Solid Zero now if you've watched these guys videos they both are a bit reaching but at the same time, they both hold up, for the most part, very well. I mean, there's a few good references, Easter eggs, to potential big possibilities in these, in these videos that they make. And it gets one thinking, because the possibilities, the coincidences, are too much. I mean, the fact that they keep piling up and piling up is way too much. The point where, you know, you, you can't ignore... Of the facts. I mean, there, there are there are evidence. There's evidence out there that there's more to this game than meets the eye. But the question is, are any of these two right? Is it a Silent Hills game or is it a Metal Gear Solid game? Now, personally, I think it's both. I think that this is some sort of crossover. That this is going to be revealed as a Metal Gear and Silent Hill game. Now, you're probably wondering, how can that work? You know, Kojima Productions doesn't own the rights. Okay, first of all, let me get this out of the way very quickly, okay? I do think this is an original IP. What I think is happening, though, is that maybe there are going to be hints of Metal Gear and Silent Hill in this game. Maybe, you know, again, you're probably saying, okay, so Kojima's using ideas he had for those for this game instead. No. What I'm suggesting is, is that Kojima is making an original game, but by the time you potentially finish it, it might be revealed in a big twist that this is connecting somewhat to both of these universes. Now, the thing you're going to be asking is, how can these two games even cross over? They have nothing in common. And how can Kojima even use the rights for this? Okay, first of all, let's uh, quickly discuss how Kojima could get away with using the rights for this game. Now, there are two possibilities to this. First off, Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid, yeah? The movie rights, for the most part, are owned by the sub, or at least I assume they are owned by the subdivisions of Sony Studios. Because Sony Studios, I think the, I think one of them is Constantine Films, I think perhaps, who made the Silent Hill movies. They do own some sort of rights for that. And uh, they also own the rights to making a potential Metal Gear Solid movie, which they're trying to get off the ground right now. So in a way, there is some sort of loophole there. Does that mean they couldn't use it for a game, perhaps? Maybe not, but maybe they can use it as a reference. Maybe they can make a reference to it instead. Of course, that's just a theory. It could be very, very wrong. It, it, it potentially is very, very wrong. But like I said, it's just a theory of mine. So, you know, hear me out, guys. So, yes, there is a loophole. They could potentially be able to do that. The other theory is, is the same thing that Kojima basically did with uh, Peace Walker and some other games when he incorporated uh, something like Monster Hunter, for example, into Peace Walker. He went and, uh, you know, asked permission, I think, to do the side elements and he implemented it into his game. He obviously worked with uh, Capcom to do that. But so, you know, the question is, what if Kojima just does, or Sony in this case, does the same thing with Konami? They get the rights to at least use some assets of Metal Gear Sight Hill for their game. But the point I'm trying to make here overall is, is that it wouldn't, necessarily be a Metal Gear Solid or Silent Hill game. It's going to be an original game 
that, you know, if you're a hardcore fan, you'll be able to understand the references that it's making. But how would that work? How would you be able to cross over these two games? Well, first of all, Metal Gear Solid is a series of games that are completely different to one another. You've got one that's a blockbuster game, you know, inspired by blockbuster cinema. You've got another one that's about digital information and parody and such. Then you have a Bond-inspired prequel set in the Cold War. And then you've got a war game that's sort of like Infinity War, where it brings all of these different characters from all the different games together for this one big climatic battle. And then you've got the uh, handheld version, which is sort of like an RPG grinding game. And then, of course, you have the free-roaming version of Metal Gear Solid, you know, with the Phantom Pain. So each game is always different. Each game brings something new and different to the table. Not one of these games is essentially the same. And each game has its own form of genre in it. Now, Metal Gear Solid 1, for example, has Psycho Mantis, who is a supernatural character. Metal Gear Solid 2 has Fortune, who, you know, is a supernatural sort of character. Metal Gear Solid 3 has the sorrow and the fury. Metal Gear Solid 5 explains that, you know, the end, you know, the, the reason why he was able to do the things that he was able to do is because he was infected by a parasite. That's how they got the parasites from his body. And I assume that the pain was also infected by parasites since he had bees in his body and he was able to manipulate bees and such. The fear, he was a normal dude, I think. He was just double jointed everywhere, I believe. But the Sorrow and the Fury, they were supernatural characters. And the reason I include the Fury is because when he dies, he ends up exploding into this vengeful spirit of sorts that starts chasing Big Boss around before he completely dies. I mean, how do you explain that, right? I mean, his emotion of anger, wrath, whatever, took over? Like, how does that even work? How does that make any sense? And for us, you've got these weird supernatural things going on in Metal Gear Solid that are never really explained. Some elements are but they they in the end they turn out to be sort of real life form really like vamp when it's revealed that the reason he can't die is because of nano machines but the sorrow and the fury they're not really explained at all how they were able to do what they were able to do and then of course you have silent hill which is like this uh game where people get trapped into this other world or the spirit world and they go for they go through hell and such Sire Hill, you could do two things. You could reveal that everything that's ever happened in those games was a form of VR simulation, or again, nano machines, or some sort of simulation that people were put into to go through these different areas. You know, you look at Silent Hills, Hills, which Kojima was making, and it was called Hills for Christ's sake, which kind of hinted that will be there would be multiple different Silent Hills, perhaps, or that you would venture through multiple different realities of Silent Hills, maybe. 
And then, of course, you look at Metal Gear Solid with the Sorrow, who's able to talk to the dead. And when he's dead, he's a spirit, he's a ghost. And there are other ghosts that he brings forth and he traps you into this other world. So maybe that's a connection there. Maybe that maybe that kind of world exists. And for us, maybe Kojima was at the time attempting to maybe cross that over. Or maybe this is what Death Stranding is. A crossover of sorts. But in the smallest way possible until the ending, or at some point in the game where then it's revealed and it's like, oh my god. You as a player, you, you know, everyone playing this game, they wouldn't know it's connected to those unless you're a fan. Unless you're a really hardcore fan of these. Maybe you're playing uh, the main character or you're fighting the main villain or something and suddenly they, they give you a clue. Maybe they reveal themselves as uh, they got a different name and then the, the character Mads, you know, the tomb portable guy is saying that Mads is the sorrow. Uh, maybe at some point uh, this character goes by a different name and then at, at the end he reveals that he's got another name and it's the sorrow. Mm. Or maybe the boss, maybe you do play as the boss and she is in this game, but she goes by a different name. But then at the end, you find out that her name is Josephine or something like that, which hints at joy or, or something like that. Or you get little hints to philosophers, stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be those games. It just means that this is a game that's tied to those games in some small or big way that only a fan would notice so there you have it there's uh, there's uh potential ideas for what death stranding could be it could be a crossover of sorts so yeah that begs the question is it potentially that again if you watch uh python selkins videos and if you watch uh tomb portables there are a lot of theories going on in there that may hint that this is the case again kojima is a trickster okay he likes to trick us he likes to pull the wool over our eyes did you like it? You know, what we see is not what we essentially get. Okay, this game is described as a as a action sci-fi game, right? And yet there are elements of horror in this. So what's up with that? There are elements of this game that tie into PT. Then you have Metal Gear Survive. And that has a lot of elements that tie it to Death Stranding. And then, of course, you have a... Uh, the Death Stranding trailers, I mean, one of the trailers has the same sound that's made, the siren sound from Silent Hill. I mean, that's in the trailers. I mean, what is that about, right? And then you have characters that look like character designs from what originally Metal Gear Solid 4 was meant to be. You know, of course, that could just be reusing concepts, but still, a bit weird, isn't it? So, yeah, do I think this theory is correct? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Both of these guys make good points. And personally, I think, like I said, I think there is more to this than meets the eye. Kojima, like I've said, is a trickster. He likes to play tricks on us. And it's been a few years now and we still don't know what this game is about. The big question everyone is asking now is whether this whole feud with Konami was legit or not. And honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is legit. I think it is legit, but then maybe it's not. That's a theory for another time to discuss. For now, this video is about discussing the potentiality that this is a Metal Gear and Silent Hill crossover of sorts. That's Or that Death Stranding is a game that's going to tie into those of sorts. Remember, this is a game where supposedly we're going to have parallel worlds. We're going to be dealing with wormholes. And wormholes were introduced in Metal Gear Solid 5. And then they were further explored in Metal Gear Survive, which Kojima had nothing to do with. Or did he? There is a connection here of sorts, which I will get into afterwards. I think you guys have, guys have seen it regarding the mysterious Mr. J that worked on PT and potentially is working on Death Stranding and is working at Konami right now. So I don't know. I don't know what that connection is. Maybe, maybe it's just a coincidence or maybe there's more to it than meets the eye. But the thing that you need to know about Kojima 100% is that he is a trickster, okay? He likes to play the tricks on us, okay? This dude lives for it. And all of these marketing for all of these games have always pulled the wool under our eyes. It's never what we end up getting. Did we play as Solid Snake throughout the majority of MGS2? No. Did we get a sequel to MGS2 uh, when MGS3 was released? No, we got a prequel. Did MGS4 let us play as a young snake? No, we played as an old snake. The, did MGS5 uh, let us play as the real big boss? No, we played as a body double for Christ's sake. Those games are, have always been tricks. They've tricked us. 
And the same can be said for Death Stranding. You can be 100% certain that at E3 this year, we're going to get some answers, but they're going to surprise us. And I wouldn't be more surprised if the final product we play is completely different to the product that is marketed and advertised. So yeah, do I think this is a possibility? I think it's a possibility only at the very end, only once we get the actual game and play it. I don't think we're ever going to find out about this until we play the actual game. Maybe we'll get some clues in the new trailer or the gameplay video, but until then, we don't know for sure. Do I think any of these guys are right? Like I said, yeah. But do I think they're also wrong? Yeah, I think they're also wrong. The same way that I could be wrong. But I also think that both are right and both are wrong, just like I am right and I am wrong. We don't know. We don't know at all. But it's a possibility and it's one we can hope for or one we can deny. Me? I'm going to go with either way. It's either going to happen, which would be a miracle or it's not. Anyway, guys, as always, I hope you like this video. A like and subscribe, whatever. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and look forward to my next video, which I will hopefully be doing soon, getting up before E3, because I really need to get these up before E3. So yeah, take care and bye.